Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Tanner's Favorite Things. I am Tanner Knight, and today we have a guitar to open and review. So let's take a look. All right, what do we have? It's a Firebird shape, but it is an LTD, the 1000, the LTD Deluxe. So this is a new style of guitar for me and for this channel. And it features two pickups that I've never played before called Fishman Fluence Pickups. If you watch anyone on the internet who plays guitar and especially and specializes in metal, then you will have heard of these pickups. They're very well received, high grade pickups, and they come stock in this model of the LTD Phoenix 1000. Uh, there are a few other variants, which we'll talk about briefly here in a second, but let's just take it in. We've got two controls, just the volume and tone with a three-way switch, and the switch is oriented up and down. So there you go. We have Tone Pros, Bridge, and um, I believe the tailpiece is also Tone Pros as well, but that's more of a guess at this point. Either way, we have very nice looking gold hardware and a nice Firebird looking shape. And if you watched my previous video, then you'll say another friggin' Firebird? What gives? I promise I didn't plan this. This just happened to come my way. I actually traded this guitar for a piece of gear, which again, we'll talk about in a second. But all you need to know is that this is a new guitar to me that I picked up via trade. And uh, let's keep going. We've got the Firebird shape. I think it's mahogany body and it is a through neck design. We'll take a look when we flip it over to verify that. But we do have the uh, the typical Firebird wings here and that shelf that's in the middle. So that typically designates a neck through guitar. We have an ebony fretboard and I think the spec called out Makasa ebony, which I don't know what that is, but it's that. Uh, we've got these mother of toilet seat style of inlays with the LTD shape, kind of flag-like. Nice, different than what you what you get on a Gibson or any other guitar that does block inlays. And then our headstock, really sleek, nice, efficient looking headstock. The brand LTD is actually an ESP company. We'll uh, see that here in a second when we flip it over. But this is an LTD built guitar and it's, it's not a licensed ESP shape from what I could tell. I could not find ESP Phoenix guitar and I don't know if that's because it was just like a short run that they made and never made again or, or what. But either way, this seems like an LTD specific design. And the headstock, like I said, is very efficient. And we'll compare this against my Firebird, the Epiphone Firebird that we talked about in last episode. But just take a look at this. It's much smaller, much more compact, and it still does have the tilt back. So that's pretty, pretty important there. So no string trees or anything, the tilt back makes it so our string pull is pretty straight and uh, yeah it's a good looking design I like it the gold tuners always looking classy really cool and we have a synthetic nut there I'm not sure of the material but looks to be like a graph tech so let's flip this thing over all right so this back tells us quite a few things here indeed it is a neck through design where the neck is this whole centerpiece here and we've got some wings glued on. Kind of difficult to see there, but you can see some seams. So that's what's going on. We have a control plate and these Fishman Fluence pickups do require a nine volt battery power supply. So that is behind this cavity here. I'm a little disappointed that they didn't provide one of the clip out ones that don't require screws, but you know, not the end of the world, two screws to pop it out. The, the 9 volt was dead on this guitar when it showed up to my house. So it was one of those things where, yeah, we're, uh, we're going to need to change that. So here's the strap button placement. The other one is where you'd expect it, right smack dab in the center of that bottom bout. And very nice looking wood. Nothing too crazy as far as grain, but we have some nice looking mahogany and nice paint as well. Nice finish. Here's our neck also mahogany, a nice little volute. And here's where you can see 
our ESP designation. This is an ESP or designed by ESP guitar and uh, that's where they share that little note for you. Also on the back, you can see that this is a Korean made version of this guitar. You, you can find them in the Indonesian plant as well as the Korean plant. This one is from Korea, which I don't know if it's universally recognized to be the better plant, but I think that you can find more love for these Korean built LTDs than you can the Indonesian ones. Really nice locking LTD branded tuners. They have the ESP font, <laughs> so that's kind of cool. They borrow that from ESP, and I don't know if they're the same exact ESP locking tuners that come on ESP guitars, but they're very nice looking, very nice feeling, and a very professional touch on this guitar. Speaking of professional touch, this one came with this case, which is just a standard road runner case, but it does have the four latches and it does have a very nice fit for this guitar as far as just being a nice case. So that was one of the positives that also drew me to this guitar in a trade. We have a three ply pick guard. That's kind of premium. Usually it's just a thin slab of one style of plastic, but we do have three ply there and it interfaces with that wing very nicely. So let's take a quick second to look at these two Firebird-esque guitars here side by side. This one is my Epiphone Firebird. Just picked this one up and did a review on it. I'll link it in the description if you have not seen that review. But it's a great, great, great guitar for the $650 price point. Next to that, we have a little more expensive price point. This guitar retails for around, I don't know, $1,100, I think. And you can still buy these new today on Reverb or at your local shop, but it is a Firebird shape. Let's take a look at the subtle differences though. The primary one being this little check in the curve right here. It's got a kind of sharp line, and that's just one of those design elements that they gotta do to be a little bit different than this one, the Gibson-esque shape, which of course is an Epiphone guitar. But either way, this one has no hard lines in it. It's all rounded off, very smooth and classic. So ESP in their design, or LTD, whomever did the design for this, added that little hard edge right there, and I guess that is different enough. But what is notable is what is the same. Again, we have the through neck design with the wings on either side. We do not have a seven piece neck or whatever, how many pieces this one is with all the walnut stripes. This one is just three pieces of mahogany, one for the center and neck, and then one each for the wings on either side of the body. But we do have a stop bar tail piece and kind of Gibson Nashville-esque style bridge. We do have the Firebird humbuckers here, those smaller style of humbuckers whereas this bad boy gets full-on humbucker-sized Fishman Fluences. So you can swap these out for whatever humbucker-sized humbuckers you want to throw in here. I've seen some with Gibson, like 498Ts, trying to, to capture more of a Gibson-y sound, vintage-y sound. I've seen some with EMGs, and I think some of these come stock with EMGs, in fact. So this one in particular comes with the Fluence, and uh, the, the neck is an Alnico, and the bridge is a ceramic. So those are the designations for the pickups. Really cool guitars, and this one has a rosewood neck, or fretboard rather, whereas this one has ebony, and of course the headstocks. Let's take a close look at the LTD headstock versus the, whoa, it doesn't even fit on there, the Gibson or Epiphone headstock. This thing is friggin' huge, and the amount of distance that the string travels, at least the E string, the low E string, it travels a huge distance between the nut and that top tuner there. I don't know if that one requires the most tension. I think it's actually the higher strings that require more tension, but still, that's a chunky old string to be pulling on there. Whereas this one, a lot more tidy and less distance for that string to travel between the nut and the top of the tuner. So there's your quick comparison, Firebird to Firebird, neither of which are Gibson, but close enough with the Epiphone and then this LTD is obviously trying to be something else with the Fishman Fluence and a flatter radius fretboard. So this is a metal guitar. Let's just come right out and say it. 
you don't have to play metal on it, and I am not, you know, the most metal-y guy there is. But I do love playing some chunky-ass metal, and we'll get some riffs going with this thing and uh, see exactly why you would purchase this guitar versus this if you are looking to chug. Alrighty, here we are with the Phoenix 1000, and all I can say is that this is a very high-end feeling guitar. And I guess we should introduce LTD a little bit better. ESP is a Japanese guitar maker. They actually have a shop here in the United States as well. So you can get a few different tiers of ESP guitars. The USA made ones I believe are the highest tier or highest cost at least. And then they have a Japanese shop which is their main shop. And there's a custom shop associated with that. Then there's a whole bunch of other offshoot brands that you'll find associated with ESP, such as Navigator and Edwards. And those guitars are all very, very highly regarded. They're made in Japan at various levels of shop expertise, but still, they're, they're very highly regarded guitars. And the price point is somewhere between $1,000 to $1,500 on the low end, like the Edwards to 2000 3000 for the Navigators, to 4000 for 5000 for the actual ESP made in Japan guitars, on up for the USA made ones. I think you can probably pay 10k if you really want, but I don't think that's too shocking for most people in the guitar market. These things are friggin' expensive, and the key for me is to find one that plays really, really well without having to pay 10k, because I think that's just, I think that's too much money to spend on a guitar for me personally, and you know, 650 bucks to a thousand dollars, that's kind of the sweet spot where you can find a really quality guitar. Even some USA made guitars like the PV stuff you can find in that price point still. But we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about ESP and LTD. So ESP comes along in, I don't know, the 70s or 80s in Japan and they start really disrupting the guitar market in the 80s when the metal movement starts to take shape. You have guitarists like James Hetfield and Kirk Hammett from Metallica who are really well known for their partnership with ESP guitars. I believe Dave Mustaine from Megadeth had an ESP partnership for a while as well. A lot of the real early metal gods were ESP players and they all had EMG pickups in them. Uh, this is not that, this is the next generation of active pickups. But the point being, ESP is known for their forward thinking, adding a preamp inside these pickups with a nine volt battery to give it a little extra juice. So that's not something they developed, but they certainly utilized it well in the 80s and began known as a kind of metal guitar company, even though they made all kinds of different guitars. So ESP Guitars is kind of a legacy brand. It's been around for a long, long time. And as such, they've typically, just like Gibson with Epiphone, Fender with Squire, and a lot of other different guitar brands, they do have a budget guitar brand that licenses their IP or their intellectual property. And uh, LTD is that brand. And I don't know exactly the origin of LTD, maybe someone can educate me about that, but it's a three letter acronym like ESP, so it's similar in that regard, and you can actually find it using that ESP font like on the tuners here. But the LTD brand is a highly respected guitar maker due to that lineage to ESP because ESP are no slouch when it comes to building a guitar. They're very, very highly regarded and it's, it's kind of similar to how PRS really makes sure that their Indonesian and Korean guitars that they build under the SE line adhere to a very, very high standard for import guitars. And I would say that this LTD line of guitars is right up there with the PRS SE line of guitars, and it's, it's no slouch whatsoever. And don't get me wrong, I'm no expert. I've only played a handful of these LTD guitars, and they do share a few different, different qualities, but overall, they're very high quality, and it's hard to find one that's a dog in my, my brief experience. So again, we have jumbo frets here on this ebony fretboard and the Fishman Fluence pickups. It kind of tells you where it's headed. We're in the metal territory. We want to do bar chords and we want to gent and we want to do da, 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 all day long. So this guitar can do it, but that's not all. 
<laughs> as they say. So this guitar really excels with the cleans and you can see that I have it in the neck position right now but we're gonna bump it down to the bridge and hear some cleans on these Fishman Fluence pickups because you very rarely hear someone actually talk about the cleans when doing a demo of these Fishman Fluence pickups at least in my experience. So let's go ahead and turn this thing up hear what it sounds like we're playing through the 5150 today, the PV5150. This is a 2004 amplifier, I think I found out. Either way, it's the PV5150, and it's 120 watts of pure fury. It's being plugged into this EVH5153 cab with two EV, electro voice, EVM12 speakers. One's a 12L, one's a 12S. We have the Sennheiser E906 on the 12L. So that's what we are doing today, metal. <laughs> that's a pretty heavy ass rig right there for a guitar in which we wanna actually hear the cleans, but it does a really good job with the cleans. So let's go ahead and do that first and uh, show you those cleans. So one little factoid about this guitar, this is the very first LTD guitar that I've ever owned personally. I have my brothers here, which, let me just go grab that real quick to share you side by side. Other than that, I've played a few of my friends' LTDs, and they're always really great guitars, but they're always heavy. I don't think they really put a premium on lighter woods, so be, be aware that you're going to pick up a heavier guitar. And this is one of the lighter guitars that I've picked up from LTD. This is my brother's LTD. I don't know the exact model, but it does have an EMG in the bridge and a Seymour Duncan in the middle position. <laughs> it's not quite the neck, but, you know, it's not the bridge either. But this is also a guitar that says ESP on the back. Um, and this one was also made in Korea. And, you know, very, very similar in spec in that we have a neck through guitar. We have what I assume is mahogany as the body. And this looks like a maple neck here, which this is a mahogany neck as well. But we have the volute on both of these. The similar style of headstock, not as pointy obviously on the Phoenix, but this is trying to emulate a more vintage style guitar, even though it does have the Fishman Fluence pickups in there. Oh, here we go, SC600, the model numbers on the, uh, the inlay right here on this guitar. So two LTD guitars, they're both very nice feeling guitars. This one plays better than this one, but uh, that's my, possibly due to the fact that it's much newer and this one needs a setup. But there you go, we have a little comparison for LTD to LTD. All right, so that's the signal chain, that's the guitar. Let's go ahead and hear what this thing sounds like. And sorry, I'll interrupt one more time before we do that. We are in standard D tuning, so. Standard tuning only down a whole step or a whole tone, a full quaver, whatever you want to call it. Uh, we're in D standard. And uh, I think that's kind of where this guitar wants to live. I, I did have it tuned up to E standard initially, but it just wanted to growl. So I tuned it down to D standard and have not looked back. So we may tune it back up. We may tune it down to C, drop C. I don't know. We'll, we'll take a look here and uh, keep going. But for now, we're in drop D and it sounds like this. <laughs> That's the bridge, again, Alnico Ceramic. So this is a ceramic pickup in the bridge and it's just a very nice clean sound. It's not my absolute favorite clean sound, but when we bump this up to the neck, we get a very different story. Let's hear that neck pickup now. in there, richness. That sounds like a very nice vintage pickup. And it doesn't sound synthetic or false or preamped at all, even though it is. Even in the, uh, the clean stage, it's still preamped slightly. But that's the color of this pickup, and it's very, very beautiful. Buttery, rich, smooth.
very sweet, even high up on the neck. And that's one thing that you can access with this guitar is these high up frets with zero, zero impedance. You're just like flying up here. There's nothing in your way. It just goes all the way to the 22nd fret. And yes, we do have 22 of these frets. It's not a 24 fret guitar with a weird scale. So standard Fender scale, 25 and a half inches. So that's kind of a weird thing to think of a Gibson style guitar with that longer 25 and a half inch scale length, but it feels very nice. And I think that's actually one of the things that contributes to this thing wanting to be tuned down a little bit. You got a bit more scale. It's not quite a baritone, but it feels a bit baritone-y when you're holding it and it wants to go down. It wants to get low and it wants to just resonate those, those low pitches. Speaking of resonance, this thing is a resonant guitar. It just wants to ring for days, even without the pickups. It, it takes a beating and it just keeps giving, keeps giving. It's really, really fun and uh, just confidence inspiring guitar. So let's hear the middle for kicks in the cleans before we move on to the dirty stuff. Really respectable, clean sounds. And as I mentioned, the bridge is probably my least favorite position. But it's very, very usable, good rhythm. You could even get some country sounds in there. Um, I do have the tone wound back a little bit because this, this does get a little bright, especially in the bridge. Here's the tone fully open. <laughs> I think somewhere around 75% on the tone dial is, is where I like it in the bridge and in the middle. And the neck, you can leave it a little bit more wide open. But uh, that's what this guitar sounds like in the cleans. Very usable all the way up the neck, nice sounds and uh, no complaints. Let's go ahead and kick it into some overdrive. First, we're gonna go right to the Boss Super Overdrive SD1. This is a pretty rowdy pedal, so let's kick it to the bridge and get her going. We are peaking the hell out of the audio, so let me go ahead and back that down. Boss Super Overdrive is pretty freaking rowdy with this combination of guitar, amp, speakers, cab. That's a great sound. So hopefully that gives you something to look at on the Super Overdrive SD1. However, there are two other channels that I want to kick this thing into, and those are the PV high gain channel on this actual 5150 amp, the lead channel, which is famous for its high gain tones, and the Metal Zone MT2, another Boss pedal. Both of which provide very, I don't want to say similar because they're not similar, but similarly aggressive distortion sounds. So we, I like to, to use those as my highest gain, at least for me, and this D standard tuning just really wants to growl through these, these two pedals here. I'm also going to create a little looped mix just so that you can hear this in a little bit more of a full band context. So here you go, this is the PV lead channel 
through this Phoenix 1000 guitar. <laughs> I love that channel. It's almost too much in this little space and I don't have it turned up all the way obviously, but it is sure aggressive sounding and I love that. Let's go ahead and go back to the PV Clean channel and just add the metal zone straight on top of that for our dirt and hear what that sounds like. Here's another loop. <laughs> about this guitar. Excellent, excellent value. I know that we talked about excellent value with the Epiphone Firebird, and that's a very different guitar. That's a much more vintage-oriented guitar. It really checks all the boxes for a vintage-inspired sounding and feeling guitar, whereas this, yeah, the Firebird was released in 1963, so it is a vintage-style guitar, but LTD is not afraid to go full on modern when it comes to appointing the guitar, especially with the pickups, our 9 volt preamped Fishman Fluence. The Tone Pro parts are very high spec, very rock solid. Our controls are simple, easy. Oh, I haven't even mentioned that we have coil splitting on this thing. And in fact, I haven't even explored it because the tones out of this thing with the regular humbuckers in full humbucker position is so goddamn good, it's hard to pull this switch. But we do have a push-pull pot on the tone. So there you go. We've got some split coils. Let's just go ahead and hear those sounds really quickly. Again, we're in the cleans. Uh, here's full-on humbucker in the bridge.
So that's the bridge. Here is the neck. And let's just go ahead and hear a little dirt with that split. Let's go back to the Super Overdrive so we don't get too crazy here. But here is the Super Overdrive, first regular, then coil split. <laughs> As expected, it is less noticeable when you add that distortion in front of it. And, uh, you know, I don't know if that's incredibly useful in a distortion context, but it's another set of, of sounds that you can get. You have one, two, three, you have four, five, six. And for being a guitar with such simple controls, it gives you really six settings instead of just the standard three. So it doubles your, your ability to create different sonic scapes, but, uh, it doesn't overcrowd the guitar. So that's a really nice option that I probably won't use too much, but it is there, a nice option, advanced electronics in this guitar. You used to be able to find these guitars for about six, 700 bucks. I don't think that's the case anymore. Like I said, MSRP is over $1,000, and with good reason, you're getting a lot of value here. There's a nice little comfort carve right here on the corner that really does help take a little bit of the edge off as compared to the Epiphone or Gibson Firebird. There's a comfort carve right here on the belly section. So it just makes it a little easier and more enjoyable to play where you're not getting jabbed every time you go to, I don't know, play an E chord. But either way, it's a very solid feeling guitar. It is a little heavy. I don't have a, a scale here to weigh exactly how much it weighs, but I would say that it's probably in the eight pounds which isn't terribly hefty as compared to some 9, 10, 11, 12 pound Les Pauls, but it is a heavier guitar and LTD is known for having heavier woods and just not really making the lightest guitar, we'll say. Overall though, the build quality is exceptional. This binding is seamless to the touch. It looks great, nice and high class, black dots on the binding. The nut is built perfectly. It is nice and solid with no, nothing sticking out. And our volute is classy and vintage inspired without looking like an old guitar. Our locking tuners are a dream. I have nothing to complain about on this guitar. And I've really gravitated towards the non-US guitars in the last six months or so. I've started down the Japanese guitar rabbit hole as it were and really been very pleased with the build quality and that made me say well if that's been going on for so many years let's check out some of these other non-japanese imports like the korean ones or the indonesian ones or the chinese ones like this epiphone firebird which is out of china i believe there's a lot to try out there and <laughs> i will never get to it all unfortunately i'm gonna try but i do love trying something different and this, for me this guitar is different it really makes me want to lean into the metal side of my musical tastes, which is probably like a 30% of my dial is metal. And the rest of it is, is more progressive inspired music, which I can't even play yet. But either way, this guitar makes me go full on 50% metal, maybe even 55, and want to chug a lot more than normal. It's chunky, it's thick, but the guitar, the neck itself is very slim. Um, I would say that the profile is probably about well, 0.81 or 82 inches and it stays thin the entire length of the neck without being just like a nothing neck. It's still there, gives you something to grab, nice rounded fretboard, rounded frets themselves. We don't have fret nibs on this style of guitar, but the frets are just out of your way. There's nothing to complain about. So, you know, that's great. Ebony fretboard. 
three ply pick guard. This is a premium feeling guitar, a premium sounding guitar, and a premium overall product. And it's not really a premium price. I know a thousand bucks is a lot of money. I don't ever want to think that it's not, but uh, believe me, what you get for a thousand dollars with this guitar, even versus a US made Stratocaster or a Gibson Special or something like that, you get way more value here than you do there. And it pains me to say that as I love my US made guitars, but there's absolutely no reason why you should turn your nose up at a guitar like this or anything that says Korea or Indonesia on the back of it without playing it first at least. You can get a dog, you can get a dud, they exist, you know, what are you going to do? But the same can be said for every single USA guitar maker as well. You can still find a dud out of the PRS Maryland factory. You can still find a dud out of the Corona USA Fender plant. So, you know, there's no 100% guarantee that your instrument's going to be rock solid. I encourage you to play it as much as you can before buying, but in the case of these LTDs, they're so consistent from guitar to guitar. Just go to a guitar center or any local guitar shop that has any of these LTD guitars and pick one up, pick up the next one, and you'll be very surprised at how consistent they feel. That's my humble opinion on a small batch. I have not held a million of these or a thousand of these, just a few of them, but enough to know that if you feel one of these guitars, you pretty much know that it's going to be the same quality as the next one. So keep that in mind when you're shopping for your next guitar. This one is just a really great all around guitar. It can give you those vintage inspired tones, but it excels in the metal high gain stuff. So if that's where you live, then this will do it and make you very, very happy. So let me know if you have any experience with this particular guitar or any of the other variants. We didn't talk too much about them, but there is a, an Olympic white, I believe, or some sort of white that is a vintage cream white that has different pickups, not the Fishman Fluence. I think they actually have Seymour Duncan's or a non-active uh, humbucking style pickup. So if that's more your style, go ahead and check that out. It's still the Phoenix LTD 1000, but there's just a slight few variations in color and spec. And, you know, they try to hit a, a few different price points as well based on those different specs. This I think is one of the higher end specs. Being the Korean made guitar also gives it a bit of a premium. It also has a case, not a factory case, but it is a hard case, that Roadrunner case. So again, another premium in my estimation of this instrument and its value. So take that with a grain of salt and let me know what you have to say about this or any other LTD guitar that you might have had experience with. So let me know if you have any questions or if you wanna see this played through any other of my amps or cabs and I can pull up a short video for you. So thank you. We hope to see you on the next one.